So that actually ties the the series up um, between Beast and CWA. That should make it two two. Yeah. So now we're down to a best of three. Moving on to our next match, which will be a ZVT. We have uh, Nevane versus Melon Monkey here. Hosting that up now. Trying to get the uh, the score updated. Um, Melon Monkey. Yeah, he's a uh, team beast. Nevane is CWA. I don't know a ton about either of these players. I know they've both played at least once or twice before in previous weeks. And yeah, actually, it should be noted these were the two top teams going into this match. So it was a pretty big match. The winner would move into first between the two. So. That's a good point. Yeah, this, uh, you know, CWA has just been dominating. Um, they've got a pretty pretty wide field. Both their A teams and B teams seem pretty strong. Um, and they've been quite active. So so hats off to them. Team Beast, uh, this is their first meeting with, with CWA. And yeah, whoever takes this really just takes the lead in the whole competition. Yeah. Alright, so we've got crossing field. We got a ZVT. Uh, what do you think about this matchup on this map? Uh, it's kind of tough to say. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the macro style with fast potential for three gases uh, favors Zerg a little bit because, you know, really the, the whole ZVT matchup as of the last few years has been about getting that third secured. Um, so if Zerg can do that easily, that does put T sort of on the back foot for a lot of things. Um, but alternatively, you know, you can see some really economically aggressive openings uh, out from T because they get that, that really safe natural and they can go for a fast three base themselves. So it kind of just changes the, the timings of things into the mid and late game. Um, but I think generally, especially at this level, just having access to that fast third favors Z. Yeah. Should be noted that that third base does have a little bit less gas. Um, so usually I think it would be ideal for Zerg to take the forward natural first and then the back natural. Uh, we'll have to see how the players play it. Um, but on that, we should uh, introduce our players. We have uh, the purple Terran from Team CWA, Nevane, on the left here. Yep, and on the right side, we have the Red Zerg Melon Monkey for Team Beast. Uh, now, interestingly, sending his Overlord straight up. Um, so, I guess, oh, yeah. I'm not sure if that was a mistake or if he was thinking about maybe some sort of 8 racks proxy. Um, sending it down now, I, I feel like that was probably a mistake. And just maybe he was on FS because of the tile set. Um, but he didn't get to the scout position for, for proxies anyway, so... Not sure exactly what the thinking is of the Overlord. Just kind of chilling as natural right now. Yeah, he's not even using it to scout it this time. I mean, I don't know. Usually you want to send that first one, kind of see if we can see what Terran's up to, if they're going for a fast expand or trying to put on some early pressure or something. But It, it can be difficult on this map because it is fairly long. Um, it's possible that your Overlord will get sniped by maybe the first Marine, but that is a risk for the Terran player to even go hunting for that. Um, so... It is the easiest time to get Overlord across the map until you have Overlord speed. And you should probably be taking advantage of it, but this is fine too. You'll be able to see any sort of bunkers or proxies coming in fast. Yeah, because we do see he's drone scouting now, so he'll know what Terran's up to. Go to see the barracks at the front there and know there's nothing, you know, immediate, no immediate danger. Yep, and uh, because there is a potential to fully ramp this, uh, fully block this ramp and take two gases. You do see mech openings, or at least 1-1-1 openings on this map more often than, than some other maps. So getting this drone scout in and being able to see oh. the gas timing is pretty big. Yeah, that SCV is quite hurt. Is it's he one hit it? away. Uh, yeah. And he cannot morph into an extractor. Oh, and he's actually running away from his friends. That's not where you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, we do see Nevane's banked up quite a lot of minerals already. He's at Ooh. 600. Yeah, like and he's I... going to throw down the CC, but... He is going to go for that one rack CC. Um, likely he's thrown off a little bit by trying to save that SCV. He still gets it sniped. And I think Melon Monkey did not see that second racks. Okay. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, I, you know, not seeing the gas timing is, is great. Uh, not seeing that the gas is up, I mean, is, is great scouting information. But leaving right before the second gas timing is, or second barracks timing, sorry, uh, is pretty big because that really changes, you know, how much you're investing to sunkins and when. So this, I guess, this opens up uh, 
Melon Monkey or Navane gives a chance to put on some pressure by going oh, yeah. this early second racks. Absolutely. Um, you know, this is the sort of matchup where you know, Zerg can defend versus anything early that Terran does, but if they don't scout it in time, there's no way to prepare. Uh, you know, if they're you're getting hit before you've even morphed your creeps into sunkins, you're gonna die. So if you're expecting that one racks um, or that plus one five rack style, they're only pumping Reen's early game from one racks. This is gonna be double that, and it can come a lot faster. So if he's not prepared for that, he could just die. Okay, he's sending a couple zerglings up now, so. If he could poke up there and might be able to see the second one, or he might be able to see the move out now when it comes. I don't know if you have enough time to throw down creeps and then morph them into sunkins if the move out comes. I think you might need them ahead of time. But Yeah, the rush distance is fairly long, um, so depending on if the Terran player really just rushes for it, uh, you might be able to get them up. A lot of times Terrans will sort of move cautiously, especially up these ridges, because if you have mass zergling, let's say, um, and they're just like move commanding to your base in a line, they could get surrounded and die. Um, so it might buy him enough time, but he is going to see it, and he knows the count of marines now, and actually moving out before medics, so this is a really strange timing. Uh, Academy is almost built at home. We're going to have to rush for some sunkens, but honestly, if Melon can clean this up, he's going to be in a great position because uh, he, there's going to be no marines left for the medic timing. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's just trying to pressure, force the Sunkins and force the Mornings, and is going to go back. But he pushed out quite a ways. Like, if Melamucky had a bunch of Zerglings on the map, he could have easily just surrounded and killed this and put Navane behind. Yeah. So it's really risky to be moving out without medics like this. Absolutely. There is no going back if you don't have medics. Um, you know, there are Speedlings at this timing, and you're going to force them out by, by pressuring. So if Zerg wants to take these Marines, he absolutely can. Um, it looks like going to be able to defend with only the two Sunkins. Did make quite a few lings, it looks like. What's the total? I see eight hanging out at the natural. And drone behind, so really nice defense uh, from Melon Monkey. Going to have his Spire at a really decent timing as well, uh, in spite of the pressure. Yeah, so, and I believe Navain's SCV did scout that Spire too. Yes. So he should know it's coming. Yep, he definitely saw the Spire timing. Um, so he'll be totally prepared. I really, I gotta say, both both players are playing this nicely, um, really making the adjustments based on what they see. And we're gonna be getting into a fairly standard mid game here. Um, I think there's enough drones out that Melon Monkey will be able to support quite a few mutas uh, when the spire is done. So we'll have to see how good he gets at that that nine muta timing. He needs to save up his minerals now. We have a really fast Evo Chamber, which is kind of weird. And two creep colonies in the back, so that's going to hurt um, his mutas a little bit. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if maybe he wants to just go for some kind of fast terra base to deal with what he's expecting to be a five racks, maybe, or multiple racks play. Um, but we only see three racks right now, and he's teching up. He's getting his factory, so we'll probably be see a starport and science facility soon after. Yeah, I'm really curious about the fast Evo. Um, looks like he's making a spore in the back base here, so really concerned about drops maybe. Um, but what I would say to that is is you really just want to get your nine mutas out. There's almost no way that a drop ship is out this early, especially on a two racks build. Um, you know, we see a factory out for uh, Navane, so there's very little chance that they're gonna be teching that quick and investing into the drop ship at this timing. So you've kind of delayed your mutas um, for not too much benefit. And we do see how many mutas came out. We have about six mutas uh, because he just didn't have the minerals. Yeah, and also, uh, if he was going dropships, when you have mutas out, you could probably find and pick off that dropship. Like, if you scout and see he's got a starport up already with a an add-on, or you could maybe find or pick off the dropship. Like, the threat of mutas on the map makes dropships not as good. Absolutely. Um, we do have two turrets here in the back, uh, and an M&M &M force ready to go, so we got some Muta Harass. Muta Micro is pretty good, but unfortunately uh, the turrets buy enough time that Zerg's not going to be able to get in there to do real damage. Two more uh, turrets over here by the main CC, but really only one turret over by the barracks. That's the weak point, point. Um, and if Melon Monkey really micros the hell out of this, uh, he could do a lot of damage here. Looks like he will just be going back, though. Yeah, he did kill one turret. I didn't see if he lost any Mutas or not. Uh, we definitely lost at least one Muta. Okay. Um, so this is the kind of thing where if that was nine Mutas and they came a little bit earlier and they went straight for this weak point, uh, that can actually end the game because there's a single turret defending the production. 
there is a decent amount of M&M, &M, but if you're picking them off while they're filtering in uh, and getting advantages, you can just get this critical mass and you're sitting over their barracks, so they just die. Um, so that's oh. why that 9 muted timing is just so critical. And he lost his other turret at his back natural here, and he got a few SCV kills. He brought his M&M back to kind of deal with it. Uh, but he was able to kill a few SCVs. And now he's trying to micro down, whittle down this marine force. Kind of keeping him pinned in while he sets up another base or tries to. There is a drone looking to maybe take the fourth there. Yeah, it's moving over now. Yeah, this, uh, is, this is really good uh, control from Mellow Monkey doing some uh, harassment while he's trying to get his tech and things going in the back. Um, we do see his macro slipping a little bit, so the, the hatch here at the fourth is delayed. Um, the hive is now starting, but you know it's really hard to do muta micro and macro at once. Um, but this is this is the critical moment where you need to get that going. But it looks like he's about on par uh, with Navani in terms of tech, and actually ahead in terms of supply, they're even. Um, so that's a good sign for the Zerg player. Yeah, usually a Zerg ahead in supply or even in supply is, usually speaks to them being a little bit ahead, but I mean, it's not always necessarily the case. Yeah, now being very aggro with only five mutas here, just got a six rejoining now. Um, but that's not really enough mutas to do a ton of damage, and at this point the M&M &M numbers have grown, that they can cover quite a bit of the space. You also have the first science vessel out, so irradiate will become a problem. The muta harass stage is nearing its end. Yeah, and we do already see Melon has made the transition into Lurkers. He's putting a couple here to guard his fourth base that's coming up. Uh, he's got a few more Hydras, I assume he's going to morph those. Hive's on the way, so we should see the Defiler mound going down soon. Uh, he needs to get those Defilers out before Terran can push out, and then he can kind of defend against any Terran push here, really. Yep, absolutely. Um, what I would say is now that his tech is going, he's got some Lurkers uh, ready to go for defense. Um, I would love to see him drone a little bit harder. If you look at his main and his back natural, um, there's not a lot of saturation going on there. So even though you're expanding to a fourth base, his economy is not that strong. Whereas if we look at the SCV counts uh, from Nirvana, he can fully support basically three mining bases. Um, so when he gets that third up, he's going to have a roaring economy and, and start getting ahead unless uh, Millen chooses to drone up pretty soon. Yeah, he does have a few idle drones sitting at his back natural as well. Yep. Uh, looks like Navane is scouting around. He just scanned another base to see if Zerg was taking that uh, 6 o'clock base there. Uh, and looks like he's now starting his third himself. Uh, he doesn't have a lot left at home. These mutas could kind of delay this third here. Yeah, they could delay the third. They could potentially pick off a tank, pick off a science vessel. So this is a great play. Oh, oh nice great. irradiate. A slow oh. split. This oh, is actually really painful. He's taking a lot of damage. He's, He's going to kill them all. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, but we do have the defense at the fourth base now getting harassed down. Lurkers, unfortunately, don't do well against tanks. So this is why you really need that hive tech up ASAP uh, while you're doing your muta harass. If you delay on that hive tech, this can happen and the tanks can uh, start taking you down. Yeah, he does have his defiler man out, up, but I don't see any defilers out yet or any like consume plague stuff ready. like. Dark Swarm, nothing. Like, he needed those Defilers out already, and then he could have held this base. Like, yeah, just definitely. One Dark Swarm over one, those Lurkers. When they have, uh, when Terran has full tech out with tanks and vessels, you absolutely need Defilers. Um, and at the time now, losing your fourth is going to be a tough position, because uh, this, this force is not going to be dealt with very easily. We're going to need Swarms, we're going to need some pretty good troop movement. And uh, it can just be joined with reinforcements any second now, so you're really going to have to be very careful as a Zerg player how you deal with this. Oh, we do have some Defilers out now, the first three and Consume is kind of close to being done upgrading here. Uh, he's just got to buy himself some time at this point until he can get some Swarms up, then he can defend easier. It looks like he wants to actually expand to the 6 o'clock now, he sent two drones down there. Yeah, trying to expand, uh, you know, you can absolutely just get all over the map and just kind of force Terran in multiple directions. That's a, a perfectly valid way to play. Um, but until you have your tech ready to go and dealing with this army, you're really just going to be bleeding units uh, as you do that and bleeding resources. Aww. So we do have the first swarm, but we have two good irradiates as well. It's going to take out both defilers. Oh, there's and a third one. one defiler. If you can get another good swarm, you could push up on this army. Okay, nice swarm. Right over the tanks and the marine force. Yeah, right on the siege tanks. So that siege was a uh, unfortunate timing, and most of these tanks I think might go down to the few hydralisks. Uh, they're gonna pull back, but there's hydra still in swarm. 
Looks like two tanks go down, and the third will remain. So, you know, pretty good play from both these players, but, uh, you know, the power of Terran is just, you have this ranged advantage, and you have efficiency in trades. So unless you can kill the Terran army, uh, all of these fights are really putting Melon behind, because he doesn't have a fourth base going, Terran's on his third, his drone saturation really isn't where it should be, and uh, losing that fourth because he had later tech means that he's, he's really just fighting to get an even footing. Well, Terran just removed like all his marines from this force. It's just like half a dozen or eight medics sitting here in a tank. <laughs> like, he could easily just come kill this up. Like, y yep. Okay. He's bringing his marines back now, but if he had noticed that and attacked sooner, he could have just killed the tank and all the medics were free. But... Yeah, and medics are not cheap. Um, not to mention these have a lot of energy, so killing these and having to remake them with with low energy medics is a big deal. Um, but yeah. decent, decent defiler play and decent science vessel play. The science vessel count is starting to get big enough um, that Melon's going to have to worry about that. He's going to need to get scourged on these immediately. Because um, yeah. once Terran has critical mass, they can just like duck in, kill a bunch of your stuff for free, and leave. Yeah, I was about to say, I'd like to see a few scourge trying to pick off these vessels. And actually, he did just make a few scourge. They're just sitting here at his natural. See, if he can clone these and pick off a couple vessels, that'll be good for him. He's going to get one... So you got one. I mean, yep. Not killing bad. killing one vessel is always worth. Absolutely. You can get a vessel. It's good. Um, so both players' macro is slipping a little bit, but you know TVZ is such a hard matchup. Um, totally understandable, especially a macro map. Neither of these players is probably used to having access to this many resources this early. Um, but if one of them can get their macro under control, then they're, they're actually going to take an advantage in this game. Uh, another swarm push coming out. We have four lurkers along with it. Only a single tank. Um, and it's actually going to just die to the Lurkers, maybe. Oh, one more hit. So, good good work saving that from uh, Nirvana. That's really close. Yeah, we have a couple Ultras now. We have an Irradiated Ultra. Uh, sometimes those can be a little bit dangerous, because they can run up against the Marines and do more damage to the Marines, too. But, okay. Right. Ultra list goes down. Yeah, the push is successful in the fact that now we have pretty safe pushes coming out with Lurkers and Ultras and enough Defilers that uh, these vessels aren't able to kill them. But, you know, as I was saying earlier, you're still just pushing to get even. Like, if this push is totally successful, that lets Melon Monkey take the fourth that he wanted a long time ago. And Melon's been at three bases. Melon's been... or sorry, uh, Navani's been at three bases. For so at this time. point... Uh, Melon's fallen a decent amount behind, and all of these little wins are just him crawling back into the game. So we have a lot of fire bats coming in. I don't know if they want to be alone, uh, single file into lurkers, or ultras too. Oh, they don't do too well against them. I mean, yeah, just kind of tickling that one armor, and we don't even have the full uh, carapace upgrade, but uh, oh. ultras are still a beast. Uh, we got a big drop coming up here in Zerg's main. Three drop ships. Ooh, that's gonna be killer. Um, yeah, three dropships. We have a good amount of medics with this as well, so it's not just pure marine. And, like, without defilers here, this is going to kill a lot of stuff. Yeah. Taking out the ultras, and now these lings are just going to run to their death. He can, like, pick off all the tech. I mean, we'll see what he goes for. He's going to take out the ultraless cavern. No more ultras coming out. A decent swarm. Uh, he is moving out of it, though. There yeah, tar the targeting tech while you're getting attacked is not really the best idea. Um, I mean, obviously killing this tech is great, but, you know, if you're ever in a position where you can fight uh, whatever Zerg sends at you, there's a high chance you just kill it, and then you can go back to killing your tech. So, yeah. once once that marine count got thinned by these two ultras, then it was pretty much over. But, but good damage. Uh, Ultra Cavern, Defiler, and Spawning Pool is basically all Zerg wants to make right now. So, you know, it, it works out. Yeah, the fact that he got that all really slows the Zerg down, and he's got another big army here coming across the map. Yeah, Couple, great job uh, with the Ultra double prong. Mm -hmm. Do, doing drafts, pushing up towards the fourth. Um, looks like yeah. he actually shut down that other expansion uh, yeah. towards six o'clock. Yeah, he's he's I mean attacking in multiple places at once, really putting the pressure on the Zerg here, and he can afford it on his three base. Looks like he's getting ready to actually take a fourth base of his own. He's got an SCV down there anyway. Um, I'm liking his position more here. I don't know if the Zerg's gonna have enough to his event. With Dark Swarm, I mean Zerg's can hold on for a while. He's still got the Defilers up. Or a Defiler there. 
Yep, and there's the vessel count is getting smaller, um, but he is able to get a couple of radiates just irradiating the next defiler here, but does get one swarm. So it's going to push this back for the time being. Um, but Monkey is oh, kind of another, bleeding oh, units. Another drop in the oh, lead. geez, that's big. Um, that's going to take out everything here. And, yeah. you know, with the force at front, like, Melon doesn't and have enough to defend both of these. Yeah, and all this tech dying, like, he's going to lose the hive. He's going to, yeah, and he just taps out. That was a lot of damage. There wasn't really anything he could do from that point, losing, losing your main and all your tech like that. With this army, you can't really get out of your base. That's GG. GG. Yeah, well played from both players. Um, Monkey really kind of took it in the mid game. His mutas were pretty effective, but I think his tech timing was just a little bit lagged behind. He felt safe enough with lurkers, um, but he didn't have the defilers ready to go. And once he lost his fourth, it was really tough. Yeah. It was a nice game by both players. I agree. It was good. It's a fun matchup. I don't play it so i don't know it all that well but I, I enjoy it i do enjoy the matchup yeah. it's it's a very fun matchup to watch playing it is so stressful <laughs> so we're gonna hop right into game two here uh looks like this one's actually on um Tau cross oh interesting uh that's probably not right but that's okay yeah Tau cross is supposed to be the third game Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, Maybe they mislabeled the replays or something. Play them out of order. Yep. No worries. Not going to be super strict on the the choice of maps. Yeah. All right. That's all right. We'll see how this one goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a solid TVZ. I'm I'm really excited to see what game two is going to be like. Because uh, that one could have gone either way, really. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see here. So. We have down a game up here in the top right, the yellow Zerg Melon Monkey. And down in the bottom corner, uh, we have the blue Terran Nivonic. All right. So, TVZ on this map, any thoughts? Well, there is the Supply Depot cheese um, that you have to be aware of. So you see a lot less 12 hatch. But aside from that, you know, it's, it's kind of a... You have a lot of drop potential in the mains. Um, there's some bridges to control, so lurker play is pretty strong. But it, it can be a pretty standard TBZ here. Um, yeah, it's tough, tough really to say. Th being a three player, if Zerg opts to go for like the really far natural as their third gas, um, it's it's possible that Terran's not going to be able to compete in the late game. But there are no ramps, so doing that standard like two lurker. Uh, control of a, a zone is really difficult. Yeah, I think uh, mutilus play might be pretty strong here. Like, if you look at the naturals, they got you know, uh, kind of this area where the mutilisks can just kind of hover over, where the marines can't really get at them. Yeah, easily. it really depends so, on which base you get too. Um, right, because some of that dead space is really big. So absolutely, you can you can just kind of hang out right outside of, of Terran's natural. It makes it really tough for them to defend. Chess is asking if I can talk about Supply Depot cheese. Um, so right here, this choke, which we've seen some pylon cheese before. Um, pylons don't block this entirely. So if you build a pylon, the Zerglings can still run through. But if you build a Supply Depot, that's actually tight. So if a uh, Zerg is going for 12 hatch and... Terran is planning some sort of 8 racks cheese and just gets a supply depot here. Doesn't matter how much you have on this side, they can just repair it forever and this hatch is going to die. Yeah, I think we saw, I think it was Siri did that in the CPL pre league tourney. Yeah, I think it was Pylon, right? Yeah, he did a Pylon. Yeah, he did it with a Pylon and like Gateway and Cannons or something against Debaser. That's right. Finals, I yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, I've seen it done with uh, Protoss against Zerg doing a cannon rush that way put your pile on there or something some cannons behind it and just kind of deny the zerg from getting that natural hatchery yep so it's just something to be aware of um usually if you do go 12 hatch you would just have to kind of leave a drone here uh because if by the time you see the scv if that's his intention you're not gonna be able to run from your main to to block that mm -hmm. so we do have a two rack straight out uh from nivane so last time he went for one racks fe into two racks this time it's going to be two racks with a fast gas um, okay. So slightly different timings here. 
not having access to that really easy back natural uh, means that you really can't can't do a one rax fe as easily um, but the, the drone is going to scout it right off um, so he's going to see everything and we'll have to see what the response is but i imagine that uh melon should be prepared since last time he was prepared without the scout yeah so i guess that means Navani or Navane or however you say it is looking for a uh, to put on some early pressure here maybe even just force some extra lings at a melon or a couple of creep colonies yeah the it's one thing Navane is actually moving out with three four marines um so even though melon scouted it, he doesn't know exactly what what is being planned but luckily uh, for him he does have adequate ling production he's making a sunken um so he should be fine here but this is a risky moment because uh you know you can really punish a terran that's doing this if you have your speed kick in like i was saying last game all these marines are forfeit with enough speed links mm -hmm. and you might just lose them here anyway oh okay maybe maybe not yeah being aggressive versus okay, sunkins is not not a good call <laughs> especially without medics <laughs> Yeah, so he's gonna have to pull back. Um, so once again, Melon does defend pretty successfully. Uh, I really like how he, he handled that. Um, unfortunately, it looks like his build is thrown off a little bit, so his lair has been delayed by about 100 gas, which is not the biggest deal. Obviously, you just don't want to die. That's priority number one. Um, but Navani is gonna be able to delay his mutas by doing that push out uh, the way he did. And it looks like he's throwing down his command center now, so he's probably setting up for another macro style game here. Yep, absolutely. Everything should normalize. You um, see the Larry has started for the Zerg as well. Yep, and now we have medics coming. So, medics and stim, once those medics come out, the marines get so much stronger, it's not even, like, fair. Uh, so we have, <laughs> we have a bunch Zerg of off. slow Zerglings going to check out what's happening at the natural, but they're not going to get anything done versus this marine force. Yeah. Oh, they're going to try? Uh, okay. They're thinking about it, but they don't even have speed. speed. Yeah, if they had speed and the medics weren't here, okay, maybe, but without speed, I don't think so. Yeah, speedlings without medics, you could trade, you know, you wouldn't win the fight necessarily, but if you wanted to whittle down the uh, marine numbers to get your mutas more effective, that's totally an option, but now it's it's all over. Two firebats coming out as well. So it kind of suggests to me, uh, Navani's going to try to be aggressive here. So the two racks style does let you have a couple of timings. Um, with that initial push out, he's kind of forced some defenses, so it'd be kind of weird to go for a second timing, but he might. Um, I'm a little concerned with the drone saturation from Melon. It looks like, you know, he made a decent amount of lanes to try to put counter pressure, but that means he's barely got drones at his natural. Yeah, yeah, he's only got one actually mining minerals, so he does have his spire coming down. Uh, fairly decent timing, it's about halfway done. But he's not going to be able to afford to get all the his mutas because he's so low on drones. Uh, looks like Melon was trying to threaten a little bit of a backstab there. So he is going to force a stim, going to force these uh, marines to run around and not read his front door. Um, which is going to give him enough time to get some more creeps up. So he's going for four total colonies. With the drone saturation that he has is really going to be a problem for him. Um, you know, his spire is almost done and he's just not going to be able to afford mutas. Yeah, and he actually just threw down two more sunken colonies or creep colonies. One's turning into a sunken now. Uh, he's got, I mean, his spire is about to finish, and he has enough minerals for like one or two muta. He has enough gas, like he'll have enough 900 gas for nine mutas, but he just won't have the minerals for them. Yeah, and he's actually going to be supply blocked as well. So that 100 minerals going to the Overlord uh, is going to be a problem. So the mutas are seriously delayed now. Um, you know, the normal, normal three hatch muta timing should have mutas basically arriving and they haven't even started mm -hmm. and i mean there nirvana here is pressing out with a good group of units he's got oh, oh i was gonna say he doesn't look like he has any medics with it but there's two coming up now uh just to put on some pressure and he's not gonna have any like mutalisks to help defend with four yeah sunkens four sunken should I be don't fine think he can break it but... no especially with a few lings as well um you know that makes a big difference in terms of how that initial trade goes and then once the Marines have been whittled down. Oh, he is going for it. There's the stim. I think he didn't realize that there were four. I was expecting maybe the only two. So that's that's not going to work out. But these mutas need to be really careful. They can't harass this ball yeah. at all. No, no. He could just... Oh, don't. Because he can't really one-shot Marines or anything. And he could just lose those so quickly. One miscontrol and they're all dead. Yep. Yeah, with only three mutas, you know, he's just posturing at this point. He's, he's not actually able to get anything done. And taking some free hits before you have the the mass that you want is not really a great trade. 
Um, so even though Mew hasn't died, one is dangerously low. And he's trying to get that Mew to mass going. This is, is not the best choice, I think. Um, not to mention, if there's all these M&M &M in the map, he should really be heading to the main. Right? There's there's no units here. You have three Marines. Yeah, uh, and like... Well, you can see at the natural, too, for Terran, there's no turrets up. He could, like, you know, ho hover over that cliff and pick off the Terran's gas or pick off some SCVs. Yeah, so recognizing that, you know, you've invested in the Sunkens, so you're pretty much safe. Um, oh. Just trying to go for some sort of attack is is probably the best way to use these mutas. Uh, gonna find the one place in the base where that has the turret defense. Uh, so that is a little bit unfortunate. Gonna be trying to harass down some supply depots, but really, you gotta be taking this timing window to find the weak points. Um, you know, these these two marines, the single turret, things like that, uh, are much more effective than just getting these, these supply depots down. But if you can kill them, it's still a good win. Um, damage is damage. Yeah. Any losses, I mean, I mean, there's turrets up at the natural now, so you won't really be able to harass that, but just any units you can pick off is good. Uh, anything you can delay or slow down for the Terran is good. You're basically looking to buy yourself some time here where you get your next bases up and you get your lurkers up and everything. Yep, so it looks like lurker tech is at a decent time, uh, at least in comparison to the mutas. We do have the factory already up and the starport coming up. So Navani does a really good job transitioning into that late game tech. Um, Melon has was a little bit behind the first game in terms of getting his hive going. And this game we don't even see the queen's nest. So I'm a little worried that's kind of going to go the same way when the tank vessel push comes out. He's just not going to be prepared for it. Yeah, it just feels like he's a little bit further behind this game than he was last game. And yeah, he's definitely. And that's a lot too. of mutas. Oh, oh yep. One, that's unfortunate. One tiny lapse of control. I think he was busy uh, dealing with his potential third. And, you know, he's trying to take it the standard way that you would take on, like, FS, where you just have some lurkers and you just build it. But without the ramp... Um, Terran can deal with that a lot easier. So this is kind of what I was saying. It, it's tough for, for that third gas to get secured. And, you know, you get a free one on a, on crossing field. So very different game here. It looks like opting for two Evos instead of a Hive. Um, so we're going to just go for power layer tech, which is kind of interesting. Interesting, yeah. We'll see how that works out. He is still, like, short on drones in his main. But he's a seems to be a little oversaturated, maybe at his nat. So yeah, I think there was probably a transfer. Yeah, there's a few. I mean, if he could put a few of those drones back in the main, that'd be good. Uh, yeah, at the minimum, you always want one per patch, exactly. Um, probably all the drones that were used to make these buildings uh, just cut into this line, and then all the rally was over here, so they just went to mine at the natural. Yeah, it's Zerg a pretty problems. pretty common issue for Zergs. Yeah, Zerg problems. Zerg problems. <laughs> Nah, no, I know. I've I've seen that happen to you before too. Oh yeah, all these drones mining at the natural or something. Yep, every You're building's a drone. Like, I would have yeah. great saturation if I had no tech. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, we see Navander Navana here is looking for this Zerg third. He's got like Marines kind of spread out, looking to see where the drone is, because I think he scanned the drone earlier, but Ellen just took this other one as his third instead. Yeah, I kind of like that move. Um, it just really shows that both these players are very aware of what the other players are doing and, and reacting accordingly. So we saw that game one. We definitely saw that this game um, at, at a lot of levels. I think Navani is just macroing like a madman this game. Um, so we saw both of their minerals creep pretty high in game one, but that's probably a result of having that fast third. That's, that's not normal. So we can see that both of them have really strong macro for this level um, on just the standard two slash three base. Yeah, that's true. They're keeping their minerals a lot lower. I mean, supplies are decent. Uh, Terran's got a little bit of a lead there, but that's to be expected in any matchup for Zerg's. Yeah, honestly, as long as Melon gets his drone saturation going, um, you know, a little more evened out and gets some drones to the third, then this is going to turn into a very even game. But we do see Navane preparing for that push out. I expect that vessel, vessel just popped. Um, yeah. So this is that vessel tank timing that really hurt Melon last time, and last time it was going from four bases to three. This time, it's a, if it's effective, it's going to be from three to two, and that's much more painful. Yeah, and we just see the defiler mound being put down now. Uh, if Navane hits with this army right now, he's not going to have any defilers out or anything to help him defend. Um, it could be a little scary, and yep. he's starting to move out now. 
Yeah, and this is that delay of that hive tech. Like, this is when you feel it. And that's why Starcraft's such a tough game. It's like, you made your mistake three minutes ago, and now is when you notice. So it's hard to really recognize uh, what you need to fix in your play, necessarily. Um, but absolutely having that defiler delayed, having the hive delayed in general, is, is gonna, gonna hurt him. Uh, unless Nevada takes forever to cross the map, uh, it looks like he's being very cautious this time. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure why he's moving so slow. Maybe he's scared of some lurkers hanging around, but he does have the vessel. He would be able to see them. Uh, he is getting close now. We, I don't, some dial defilers are starting to be made now. Yeah, I think, um, because there are four sunkens to delay, it's possible that the defiler tech would be just on time here. But ideally you'd want, you know, consumed completed by now and able to just throw down the first swarm even outside of your choke. So he is definitely going to be feeling some pressure for the next minute. Doing a good job trying to clean up the left side of the base while under this pressure. I really like that, which is like a handful of units. I'm um, trying to take that expansion as well. It really shows that he's he's thinking in, in all, all aspects of the game. He's not just trying to survive desperately, um, yeah, but trying I to mean, get ahead. Yeah, I mean, if he can get those bases established and not lose his natural here, he'll be in a really good place, a really good spot. Like, he'll be on four gas, four base, right? But if yep. he does lose this base, it's going to be really tough for him to get back into this game. Uh, he does have a couple defilers out. There wasn't a radiate on one of them. Yeah, so Consume just finishes here. Um, so if he gets that, that first couple swarms down in a good spot, he can absolutely repel this. Only losing really just a couple defilers. Oh, oh the tanks. You always got to watch out for that. Where's that second defiler? Oh, oh no, he committed anyway. Uh, uh, you can't commit fun. if the swarm gets sniped. I don't think he was expecting it. He probably didn't see it go down and just thought the defiler was farther back. Um, but that yeah. is a critical mistake. And yeah, uh, Nevada, to be able to push in here. Yeah, he's actually not controlling versus this Lurker, so he's taking a ton of damage. Um, but there's barely any units, and it looks like Melon doesn't know where that last defiler is. So the swarm is not coming down. We really need to see that. Uh, kind of unfortunate, but that's, that's the knife edge that TVZ is balanced on. Getting those swarms out. Absolutely. Oh, man. This is looking. Not, I mean, he's gonna lose his base. He's got a couple defilers, a few more. To, he's got like five defilers out there now. But yeah. there's no units to back them up. That's another problem. You realize you need defilers, and some of them died, so you just make a whole bunch. Um, but it's very easy to make three at once. And not not knowing where this one was, uh, it really really hurt him here. So at this point, that's a ton of damage because he didn't manage to save the drones either. And we have a Firebat chasing uh, Defilers into the main. If, if that kills all the drones, he's barely going to be mining. Yeah, I mean, losing the Nat, losing that extra gas. He still has his third and his fourth is just starting to mine now. But, I mean, he's just going to lose all his tech here, it looks like. And we saw what happened when he lost all his tech last game, so... It's not looking good for our Zerg player. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, there is the GG. Well played, really. I think uh, these guys are pretty evenly matched, to be honest, even though both games kind of went a similar way. I think Melon really just needs to figure out that drone saturation and get that defiler out a little bit faster. Yeah, for sure. It's just like a couple seemingly li li little mistakes uh, that he had. Some, some things that could easily be fixed that would have, I mean, made that game a lot closer for him, a lot easier for him to fight. Like, if he had his Defilers up in time, then Terran doesn't break that, and all of a sudden, you know, Zerg's on four base with his Defilers out, with his Lurkers, his Slings, you know, he's in a, in a good spot. Absolutely. And props to Nivane for, you know, really playing a solid game. That's, both of those games were, were textbook, great pressure, great macro. Um, so looking pretty strong in TVZ.